Ever wonder what life is like in North Korea? It's a place where duct tape is more common than talk about freedom and human rights. North Korea is a mysterious land, hidden in isolation and secrecy, where rules and bizarre happenings define daily life, from perplexing lifestyle in one city to a world of range and camouflage in another. Join us as we explore the weird things that exist only in North Korea. Number 15. The Cult of Personality and the Eternal Leaders in North Korea, there's a strong belief in the cult of personality and eternal leaders. Before we explore the hidden aspects of this nation, understand that the power center lies in the cult of personality and eternal leaders. North Koreans follow the rule of law and the leadership of one family, the Kim. Kim Il-sung, the founder in 1948, established the country's rules. While North Korea claims to be a democratic country, practicing democracy every five years, the reality is different. They vote for one person, which may seem weird. To understand why North Koreans are dedicated to the Kim family, understanding of the historical roots, the mechanisms behind the cult, its impact on society, and the consequences for North Korea's politics and international relations is important. The core of North Korea's cult of personality lies in glorifying and elevating its leaders, Kim Il-sung and his son Kim Jong-il. Kim Il-sung shaped the cult during his rule, using propaganda to portray himself as a benevolent and all-powerful Powerful leader, almost like a god. People were encouraged to obey him unquestioningly. Kim Il-sung's birth year even became the starting date for the Juche calendar, symbolizing the country's doctrine of self-reliance. This day is a significant holiday in North Korea, celebrated with fireworks and festivities. The personality cult served several purposes. Firstly, it strengthened the leader's hold on power by fostering loyalty and fear. Any questioning of the leader's authority was severely suppressed. People were expected to obey and conform. Additionally, the cult credited all the nation's achievements to the brilliance and guidance of the leader. This created a narrative that tied the success of the country directly to the leader's influence. Number 14. No Religion in North Korea, people don't follow any religion. This isn't surprising because the leaders are seen like gods, so they don't feel the need for another god. It's a known fact that before Kim took full power in 1948, his mom, Kang Pan Suk, was a Christian. Kim admitted he went to church as a kid, but found it boring. Maybe that's why he made sure people in North Korea are never bored. The government in North Korea follows the ideology of Juche, which promotes self-reliance and a strong focus on the ruling Kim family. They don't allow organized religion, and those who practice their faith face harsh punishment. The government only promotes a cult of personality around its leaders, especially Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, treating them like almost gods. Citizens have to participate in ceremonies praising the leaders, and any disrespect is severely punished. They are closely watched by the government. However, Christianity is strictly forbidden, and anyone caught practicing it faces severe punishment. The government sees it as a threat because it's linked to foreign influence. Despite all these rules, I believe there are secret religious practices and believers. People aren't robots, and they can be sneaky, but they have to be very careful to avoid punishment, even death. Number 13. Three Generational Punishment In North Korea, if someone does something bad, like taking an apple without asking, their whole family might also be punished, even their kids or grandkids. In North Korea, they have a rule where if someone is seen as an enemy of the government or involved in politics against them, three generations of their family might end up in prison because of it. This rule in North Korea is different from usual punishments. It doesn't just affect the person who did something wrong. It also brings trouble to their family for at least three generations in a row. The genesis of this policy can be traced back to the early years of North Korea, under the leadership of Kim Il-sung. The reason behind this rule is to make the ruling group stronger by punishing many generations of a family. They do this to stop any disagreement or resistance before it happens. So, by scaring the whole family, they try to stop anyone from thinking about going against the government. When someone is accused of political stuff or seen as against the government, it's not just them who get in trouble. Their parents, kids, and even grandkids might end up in jail, have to work really hard, or get sent far away. They do this to make sure nobody in the family even thinks about disagreeing with the government. The resulting atmosphere of fear prevents individuals from expressing their thoughts and opinions freely, effectively nullifying any semblance of freedom of speech. Criticism from the global community condemning this policy for its infringement upon individual rights and lack of adherence to a fair judicial process is prevalent. Nevertheless, the North Korean government remains impervious to external opinions, disregarding international censure. 
Consequently, innocent individuals and their families bear the brunt of the stringent policies imposed by the North Korean regime. Number 12. Fake Cities North Korea is known for keeping things secret, but making fake cities is a bit much. One of these cities is called Kijongdong. It's made to look prosperous and successful to fool people from other countries. These fake cities are mostly near North Korea's border with South Korea, especially in the Kaesong Industrial Area along the Korean Demilitarized Zone. One famous fake city is Kijongdong, also called the Propaganda Village. Kijongdong got attention because it seemed real and perfect. It's in the demilitarized zone and looks like a well-planned city with tall buildings and a big flagpole, but it's supposed to show off patriotism patriotic North Koreans. But why make fake cities and spend money on them? The belief is that North Korea wants to trick other countries, especially South Korea, by showing off a fake image of wealth and progress. North Korea wants to seem strong and perfect, even though the reality is different. People argue about why North Korea does this. Some think it's to look powerful, but there are reports that the buildings in Kijongdong don't have glass windows. Some say that the whole village might just be a set with no real people living there. Others think these fake cities are a way to distract North Koreans from the tough life they have because of problems like not having enough money, not enough food, and not enough basic things. North Korea has faced big economic challenges, and many of its people don't have a good life. The truth about these fake cities is hard to know, because North Korea keeps everything secret. Foreign journalists or visitors can't easily check these places, so it's tough to confirm what's really happening with these fake cities. Number 11. Prohibition of Blue Jeans and Western Clothing North Korea doesn't allow people to wear blue jeans and clothes from the West. This rule is because Kim Jong-un thinks these clothes represent American ideas and influence. The ban includes imported clothes and t-shirts. People in North Korea must wear clothes that follow the rules set by the government. Instead of jeans, they are encouraged to wear traditional Korean clothes, like hanboks. This shows the government's focus on preserving their cultural heritage and national pride. The government is strict about these clothing rules. Officials check and punish those who break the dress code. People who don't follow the rules might have to pay fines, face public criticism, or even go to prison. This control over clothing has received mixed reactions globally. Some say it helps keep a unique North Korean identity, while others think it's a way to limit individuality and force everyone to be the same. This clothing rule is just one example of how the North Korean government controls many aspects of its citizens' lives. Another area of control is the way people are allowed to style their hair. Number 10. State Control Haircut in North Korea, the government controls the way people cut their hair. When we think about North Korean haircuts, we often think about their leader, Kim Jong-un. Fortunately, most people don't want to have the same haircut as him. In North Korea, the government has strict rules about how people should style their hair. This is part of the country's cultural norms. The government wants everyone to look similar and present a specific image of the ideal citizen. These rules apply to men, women, and children. There are only 28 approved haircuts, with 10 for men and 18 for women. The government uses media, posters, and inspections to enforce these rules. Men usually have to keep their hair short, following specific guidelines about length, style, and sideburns. Women have a bit more flexibility, but they still need to maintain a conservative appearance. Traditional Korean hairstyles inspired by historical figures and leaders are preferred. For example, a popular women's style resembling the haircut of former leader Kim Jong-il. Local hair salons play a big role in enforcing these rules. They must display posters of approved hairstyles and follow the government's guidelines. Hairdressers may even have to report customers trying forbidden styles, creating a fear of being watched. The rules go beyond haircuts. Men must be clean-shaven, and facial hair is discouraged. Women must follow grooming standards, covering thighs and cleavage. Makeup should be moderate for a natural appearance. Breaking these grooming rules can lead to fines, public shaming, intense labor, or even death. The punishment depends on the severity of the violation and the person's political status. The government wants everyone to look a certain way to maintain unity and follow the state's ideals. This strict control over appearance is part of the overall surveillance and regulation in North Korea. Number 9. The Traffic Ladies in North Korea, when tourists visit, they often notice the traffic ladies. These are women who wear nice uniforms, white gloves, and hats. They control the traffic in a graceful way. The traffic ladies are special and important in North Korea. They wear uniforms and help with traffic in the capital city, Pyongyang. People, like those walking and driving, respect the traffic ladies. These ladies are trained very well. 
They follow rules and act in a disciplined way. Besides helping with traffic, they're also symbols of pride and discipline for the country. To become a traffic lady, women are carefully chosen based on how they look, how tall they are, and their education. They learn not only traffic rules, but also how to communicate and use hand signals to control traffic better. The traffic ladies started their job in the 1960s to make society more disciplined. Now they are a symbol of North Korea's special way of doing things. They're often shown in the media and propaganda to represent the country. Number 8. Dating in North Korea the way North Koreans date is quite different from what you might expect. They don't typically go to movies or engage in various dating activities. Instead, they often take quiet walks together, keeping to themselves. The unique social and political situation in North Korea strongly influences how people date. The government tightly controls interactions between citizens, including romantic relationships. Formal dating and public displays of affection are not allowed. Social gatherings are closely monitored, so people are careful about getting involved in romantic activities due to potential surveillance and punishment. In North Korea, traditional matchmaking and arranged marriages are more common. Factors like social status and loyalty to the government play a significant role in these arrangements. The government discourages relationships with foreigners, considering them a potential security risk. This makes cross-country dating difficult. Overall, dating in North Korea is challenging and regulated. It reflects the government's emphasis on maintaining a strict social order and ensuring ideological conformity. Number 7. No Use of Contraceptives and Sanitaries Using contraceptives and sanitary products is important. This message serves as a warning. In North Korea, some women may not be aware of sanitary pads. Due to the secretive nature of the country, things may have changed, but according to past knowledge from women who lived there, they used cloth and towels, washed and reused them. This practice seems unhygienic and bothersome. In today's world, women should have the right to feel protected and clean. Number 6. No television, telephone, or internet connection. In North Korea, there is no TV, phone, or internet connection. The government has a strict rule about this to control information and communication. This rule has been there for a long time, and its main goal is to keep the country isolated and control what people know. The government wants to make sure that citizens only hear what they want them to hear. Banning TV and internet helps the government control what information people get and stops them from seeing things from other countries. This way, the government can keep its ideas strong and make people believe in their leader. The rule also makes sure that citizens don't learn about different ways of life or ideas. People in North Korea are taught to be very loyal to their leader because they believe the government is the only source of information and support. To enforce this rule, the government watches people closely and punishes anyone caught with a TV or internet device. The punishment can be very severe, like going to prison or even being killed. Even though there are risks, some people in North Korea find ways to watch foreign media using secret devices. However, if they get caught, the consequences are serious. It's important to know that North Koreans can't see this video or read this information. There's an image showing high school students in North Korea doing something that seems meant for married people. It makes us wonder about how they teach sexual education there. Number 5. Prison Camps in North Korea In North Korea, there are different kinds of prison camps where people who break the rules are sent. Let's take a closer look at the lives of those inside these prisons. It's like a small community. First, there are political prison camps, for those seen as enemies of the government. These are people suspected of disagreeing with the government or trying to leave the country. Conditions in these camps are very tough. Prisoners have to do hard work, get very little food and medical care, and often experience torture, abuse, and even executions. This is done to create fear and control. There is also strict watching to stop anyone from speaking out against the government. Then, there are labor camps for people seen as criminals by North Korean standards. They might have crossed the border illegally or smuggled things. In these camps, prisoners have to do hard, tiring work without being paid properly or getting enough rest. The last type is re-education centers. These are considered the best because they aim to help individuals who have committed small offenses. For example, if you decide to keep your hair longer than usual, they might think you have a mental problem. These centers use psychological techniques to make people loyal to the government and get rid of any threats to its power. Some might say this kind of punishment is better than the others, but it's worth questioning if they really use it as they say. Number 4. The Educational System in North Korea the school system in North Korea is quite different. The government controls it a lot. 
All kids from 5 to 16 have to go to school, and it's free. There are three parts, first, second, and higher education. They learn things like Korean, math, social studies, and gym. But the lessons also talk about how great their leaders are and the country's history. They also learn a certain set of ideas early on, like relying on themselves, being strong in the military, and being loyal to the Kim family who rules the country. Picking students for different things starts early. They choose kids based on how loyal they seem to the government and their family background. If someone in their family is seen as not loyal, they might face problems especially if they end up in prison. Teachers have to learn a lot about these ideas, too. Their main job is to make sure students believe in the government's ideas. They don't want kids to question things. They want them to follow the rules. Outside of regular classes, there are many clubs and groups for kids. They do things like music, sports, and art. These activities help make kids more loyal to the government. Even higher education is controlled. Only a few can go to the best universities in the capital, Pyongyang. Most go to local ones. When they finish, they have to work where the government says and help with the government's goals. They can't really have their own plans. Everything is for the government. Number 3. Strange Time Zones and Calendars North Korea has its own special time zone and calendar that make it different from the rest of the world. They call their time zone Pyongyang time, named after their capital city. Let me explain it in simpler terms. North Korea's time is eight hours ahead of the coordinated universal time. This means it's half an hour behind South Korea and Japan. In August 2015, North Korea changed its time by 30 minutes to celebrate the 70th anniversary of being free from Japan. This change was meant to show their independence and go back to the time before Japan ruled them. Besides the unique time zone, North Korea also has its own calendar called the Juche Calendar, started in 1997. This calendar begins with the birth year of Kim Il-sung, North Korea's first leader. These special time zones and calendars show how North Korea wants to be different and independent, even if it makes things complicated for international interactions and businesses. It's a way for the government to control its people and tell the story of being self-reliant and in control. Number 2. The Rugyong Hotel The Rugyong Hotel is one of the biggest hotels in the world, but it's only in North Korea. The hotel is in Pyongyang, North Korea, and it's a really big building that stands out in the city. It's about 330 meters tall and has 105 floors, making it one of the tallest buildings in the world nobody lives or works in. They started building the hotel in 1987, but they had to stop for many years because of money problems. People started calling it the Hotel of Doom because it took a long time to finish. The hotel looks different from other buildings. It has three parts that go up like steps, like a pyramid or a cone. The outside is made of glass and concrete, making it look very modern. Even though it took a long time to build and wasn't finished for a while, they did some work on it, like adding special lights that make it glow at night. But we don't know much about what's inside the Ryugong Hotel because it's a secret. It's like a mysterious and talked about place in North Korea, showing the country's big plans for buildings. But it hasn't been used and no one has been inside. Number 1. Arirang Mass Game The Arirang Mass Games are an amazing and captivating show in North Korea. The event happens every year to celebrate the country's history and to encourage love for the nation among its people. The mass games include dancing, gymnastics, music, and military displays that demonstrate the beliefs of the ruling government. The Arirang Games were initially organized to honor the leaders Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il from the Korean Workers' Party. Over time, the event has grown to become one of the most impressive mass performances globally with thousands of participants, mainly students, and members of different groups. They create intricate patterns and images that can be seen from far away, showcasing their skill and precision. Achieving this requires intense training and strict discipline. The event usually takes place in Pyongyang's Mayday Stadium, the world's largest stadium, accommodating over 150,000 spectators. The performances are a spectacular blend of lights, colors, and movements, accompanied by carefully planned propaganda praising the country's leaders and their achievements. The themes often focus on North Korean history, revolutionary struggles, and the supposed benefits of socialism. The music for the event is performed by a large choir singing patriotic songs and revolutionary anthems in perfect harmony. Traditional Korean folk music instruments are also used, adding cultural richness to the displays. Despite North Korea being seen as mysterious, these mass games show a different side that is both impressive and unique. Alrighty folks, that's a wrap for this video. We hope you find it informative and enjoyable. 
So, which of these weird things about North Korea shocked you the most? Share in the comments below. Moreover, if you appreciate our content and wish to stay updated on our latest releases, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell. Your support means the world to us. Thank you for tuning in and until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.